My name's Aaron with Ventrac, and today we were inspired to go over the cab on the 4520 tractor. So recently our marketing department was out doing a shoot in New York uh, in some pretty inclement conditions. In fact, you can see <laughs> some remnants from the storm still on the cab. Uh, haven't fully washed this thing yet. But anyway, at that shoot, uh, we realized it was probably worth highlighting this feature uh, just to kind of give you guys a, a sense of what the cab does and what, what its usefulness is. So we want to take a walk around, just show you all the features of the cab and address maybe some of the questions that we get about it and uh, kind of give a whole overview. So we'll start at the outside here. These are your hazard lights, front work lights, and then you got your windshield wiper. Up front here, you've got mirrors on both sides. This is a big advantage uh, in a tractor that's you know, of any, of any real size, being able to see directly behind you um, and, and see that vantage point. These do also fold in. So if you are going through a tight area and you have to squeeze through, uh, or if you happen to hit something, they'll fold away. Um, so that's a nice feature there. Uh, all of the doors here, and we'll show this on the inside as well, um, they're, they're glass panels, so they hold up really well. They stay clear, um, and you can, you can wash them and clean them, and they, they start to look really good. Uh, you got to be really wary of cabs that are built with plexiglass or fiberglass panels because they start to get really foggy, so glass is definitely preferred there. And you can also see from the outside these glass panels that give you really good visibility down to the front corners of the machine. That's really critical as you're going around things, whatever edge lines you're working on, especially on sidewalks so you don't tear up the grass around them. Coming over to the back, we'll look at a couple things here. So you've got your rear hazards show up here, a rear work light um, and a strobe. This also swings away back and front. That way if you hit something, uh, it doesn't damage the light. Uh, but it's all about just visibility. So when you get all lit up in a snowstorm, you got snow flying, uh, usually it's, it's at night or really low light situations. So having light all around you for safety and for visibility of the tractor. Back here, there's also a replaceable cabin air filter. So you take these screws loose and uh, pull this filter out, replace it. Um, and that helps keep the, the air inside fresh. There's a lot of little panels here too to help contour the tractor. Obviously a tractor is a really complex shape, but you've got um, some panels here that are kind of molded to the shape of the tractor and, and then Velcroed in so that it has a really good seal overall and you trap as much of the warm air in as possible. The cab also goes on the outside of the ROPS, so you retain the ROPS for any rollover protection that you need and the cab goes on the outside of that. On the left side here, you'll see access to the fuel tank is still exterior. So even though our fuel tank is kind of in a weird spot for a cab, um, we've got a, a door basically built in so the, the fuel tank uh, is isolated to the outside so that you don't get any of those fumes or anything in on the operator. Um, and then another thing to point out here on the outside, you'll see both on both sides these lines running up here. This is a coolant line and it runs in, you get plumbed in down here in the front and it runs up to the top of the cab and these coolant lines are what heat the cab. That's why you can only use this cab with heat on liquid cooled tractors. If you put it on an air cooled tractor, then it'll work. It just, you won't be able to, to have heat plumbed into the system. And so those go up here and they, they work inside of the, inside this headliner. There's a whole system in there that, that uses that hot water uh, or coolant to generate the heat and uh, give you warm air for the operator. So let's go inside here, open up the door and we'll take a peek on the inside. So this is, um, a pretty good representation of maybe an average sized operator, uh, how they fit inside the cab. One of the, one of the questions that we get most frequently about the cab, there's two big ones that we get a lot is how will my guys fit uh, or my workers fit inside the cab? I, I can't speak for everyone. So uh, you have to take that with a grain of salt, but I'm about six foot, uh, pretty average shoe size 11s or so. Um, and you know, I've got plenty of space in here to the front louvers. Uh, foot pedal is good. Head height to the uh, top of the headliner is, you know, at least probably eight inches or so. Um, good elbow room, good room to the front of me. Uh, so it's a, it's a very spacious cab while still maintaining that, that compact footprint so you can make your way through tighter areas. Uh, the other question that we get really frequently is how long does it take to install the cab? That's probably the, the top question we get because the first time, we have really good process outlined in our manual. It's, it's pictorial, so you can see you know, step by step how to do it. It's not a hard process, it does take a little bit of time, but the manual does state recommended time expenditure of about three hours to install the cab for the first time. That includes plumbing all the heater lines and everything like that. 
Once you've done it one time though, those heater lines can stay there and you're just lifting the cab itself off. You can probably save yourself an hour or so. So you can probably count on just a couple hours, maybe even a little less if you're really proficient at it. But there's four anchor points. There's two underneath the headliner and two on the back that an overhead hoist can just lift it right off the tractor and then move it to set it aside. And that's really the, the, the recommended way to do it, the only way we do it here. Um, so if you have that tool and you have you know, a little bit of understanding and, and the proper manual, which is downloadable from our website, then you should be able to get it done first time with all of the installs uh, in you know, three hours or less. So let's keep going here on the internal controls. Up here, it's pretty self-explanatory. So you've got a lot of automotive style vents in here. These vents can be spun or change directions depending on what you want to do with them. Um, you can direct air you know, right to the windows to help uh, frost anything from happening. Um, over here on this panel, we'll start here, you've got your 12 volt power USB. So you can charge your phone or your devices. Uh, back here, let me, oops, let me need to turn the key on for that to work. You've got an interior light. This helps if you're doing any paperwork or you're looking at directions or something like that or you need to find something in your pockets. Uh, this are, these are all your controls for the outside lights. So hazard lights are on, uh, and I'll, I'll just put all of these on, and then I'll have Mark can zoom out with the camera and just look at all of them. This is your rear strobe, your rear work light, and your front work light. Take a quick look at those. They should all be going. And I'll just turn those off one by one as well. Right next to those, you've got your wiper control. And that's really critical, especially if you're doing something like a broom or a snowblower with any wind, you're getting spray back on you, uh, especially if it's a, a walk that's been salted and it's got that hazy look to it. Having actual washer fluid to clear that window makes it visibility a lot better. Next to that, you've got your fan speeds, zero through four or three, and your temperature control. So, you know, cool to warm. A lot of questions about temperature in this thing too. Um, it's, you know, it's not perfectly sealed because the, the cab is an articulating cab. So you can see down here, we've got um, some louvers that also Velcro in, and then there's some, some voids that need to be taken up so that when you turn, it can occupy that movement. But I will say that in most weather conditions, the cab is more than you need. In fact, uh, I was using it last week and I actually had to open the window because I couldn't get the, the cab cold enough. Uh, by myself just because the outside light was heating it up. So I actually had to have this all off and open the window to cool it down a little bit. There's a position there that lets you crack the window to get some extra air inside. So it does get very warm, especially down to those really super cold temperatures and you can keep your routes done consistently. Okay, keep going on the cab inside. This is your reservoir for your washer fluid. Uh, lasts pretty long, so it's good access there. Um, Looking back here, if there's anything else to note, note, there is an additional kit that we add um, for when you have the cab installed for the operator to have a headrest here and a four-point harness. I would recommend that you give yourself a little bit of space here, but also enough that it stops you. If you're using a blade, uh, or even if you're using a, a snowblower or something and, you, and you're going really quickly and you hit a real solid edge on a, on a driveway or a, a sidewalk that's, that's heaved up or something, the tractor can come to a, a near stop pretty quickly before the blade trips. So keep your operator safe, keep them in the four-point harness. Um, other than that, I think controls are pretty simple. Several of the windows have these same latches. So these are good if you need to open it up and chat with a team member, you know, talk about various spots of the job, or this is a designated escape hatch if you get into a situation and, and this door is blocked and you have to get out. So that is the winter cab on the Ventrac 4520. And it's one of those things that uh, a lot of people ask questions about because it's something that adds a lot of value as soon as the temperatures get a little bit cold. So keep your operators happy, keep your operators productive, and invest in the cab. If you have any questions about the KW cab or any of the other winter snow attachments for the Ventrac, you can see that stuff on our website at Ventrac.com. Also, you can check out our other videos. Be sure to look at our latest snow removal videos using the 4520 with this cab as a highlight and the rest of the attachments. You can see just how it works when you're in the elements and you're actually using it because that's what matters. Uh, very comfortable and works awesome. So check it out. And if you got any questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll be sure to answer you as soon as possible.
Thanks for watching.